Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to The Health Show with me, Alastair Greener. During this series, we've been showcasing a range of health topics and each week we're joined by a health expert in the specialist field being discussed. Looking at how you can change your health and lifestyle for the better, each episode offers an alternative viewpoint from our health experts who attend the show and that we really hope that this will help guide you in the right direction towards better health. If you'd like any further information on our programme or any of the topics being discussed, then please do get in touch at healthshow at islamchannel.tv. Today we're looking at prostate cancer and we'll be looking at it with the topic with ORCID, a UK charity working on behalf of anyone affected by male cancer. We're welcoming a number of guests onto the show, and which includes in the second half the councillor for the London Borough of Redbridge. But firstly, I'd like to welcome Rebecca Porter, Chief Executive Officer of the Orchid Cancer Appeal. Rebecca works closely with the research community as well as health and social care professionals to improve public health and cancer prevention campaigns. Joining Rebecca is Wayne Douglas, Head of Commissioning and Transformation for NHS Newham CCG. NHS Newham CCG is part of the East London Health and Care Partnership and has a significant interest in improving the well-being of patients with cancer. Well, welcome both of you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on the show. Thank you. Hello. It's a really important subject, so lots to talk about. But before we do talk to our guests, let's take a look at a quick advert. Well, again, thank you so much indeed, both of you, for coming onto the show. Uh, starting off with you, Rebecca, you know, Orchid, an incredibly important charity. Give us an idea of how it started and how you really got so involved with other local councils and boroughs to help raise the profile of various campaigns. Certainly. So the charity was started in 1996 uh, by a gentleman who had very advanced stage testicular cancer. Um, and in conjunction with the professor who treated him, uh, thankfully saved his life, the charity was set up. The objective of the charity is really to raise awareness of male cancer and to really fight the corner for men uh, who are at risk of uh, developing a male cancer or who are living with male cancer. Um, and through a programme of research, so we fund research, which is really world-class super research, uh, looking at these cancers, why they happen, how we can manage them, how they can be best treated, that's an important part of our work. We also do a lot of awareness raising, so we go out in communities and we talk about male cancer, um, and we do education programs, so go, we go to schools and universities and talk about male cancer and your risk of male cancer. And then we uh, fund and encourage a nurse-led support service, so that includes leaflets, information, we have a free phone helpline for people to call, and you're speaking to a nurse who really understands what you might be going through or your worries if you're not yet diagnosed with a male cancer. And that, of course, brings us very neatly to Wayne mm. and uh, how you got involved at NHS Newham CCG. Yeah. How did you find out about ORCID? And there's a lot of different charities out there who are helping raise awareness. What was it about ORCID that made you feel this was actually a great partner? They are. Um, there, there are quite a number, but I think... Um, for, for us locally, um, across North East London, in fact, um, we recognise the um, uh, uh, significant work that we could have, have done in the past and, and we recognise that they have uh, really good links into our communities um, and what we're trying to do, we, we felt we need to get the right 
people in place and um, and this organisation I think in the work that we're planning and we're starting to develop I think we are um, we have a kind of a, a really good relationship really um, and we think um, we have the right partners in place mm. really to really um, hold in on the male cancer issue that we have um, here in North East London not just Newham as well so and we'll talk a little bit more about the campaign and the awareness campaign because that's obviously a massive part of, mm. of, of what Absolutely. you do Rebecca mm. but let's just get down to some basics first of all mm. you know we hear this word and it's great the fact that people can feel hopefully a little bit more comfortable talking about cancer generally mm. and I know obviously you deal with all male cancers but mm. looking particularly at prostate cancer can you give us a, a, just some real basics about what it is, how we get it, mm -hmm. how it shows itself? Maybe start off with what it is. Okay. So um, here in the UK, about 40, 47,000 men a year will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, what we are aiming to do, and this is why we're so pleased to be working with Wayne, is we are aiming to really get men to understand what some of the common signs and symptoms might be, when they need to talk to their families and their loved ones, when they need to go to the GP. So just picking up what you were asking me, Alistair, the, the really key thing is if you're noticing something that seems different, so if you're getting up and going to the toilet a lot uh, in the evening, mm -hmm. if you're struggling to go to the toilet, if something just generally doesn't feel right, um, and it might be that your family member picks that up, that you're getting up a lot in the night, what we want you to do is to do something about it. So go and talk to your GP, have a conversation with your GP as soon as possible. Too many cases of cancer are diagnosed through A&E, and we want to avoid that. Um, we, like all the other cancer charities, like Wayne and his team, recognise the importance. If you pick something up early, you talk to your GP, absolutely um, And will it really only manifest itself in the way that you go to the toilet? In other words, you're going more frequently? Absolutely. Or are there other ways that you might... Is there, are there any other signs that you might pick well, up? Well, it's really interesting. So many of the men um, and their loved ones that we talk to talk about men getting up in the night and going to the toilet. So lots of wives um, and family members say, you know, my husband got up in the night, he was going regularly, he didn't used to go as frequently as he does now so that's a really common thing that we um, that we hear about there are risk factors involved so if you are somebody um, from a black African or black Caribbean uh, background you are much more likely to be at risk uh, of uh, prostate cancer and you're very often going to be much younger so you need to be looking out to uh, for common signs and symptoms going to see your GP that much earlier so those are the things that you need to be aware of things that seem a bit out of the norm actually yeah. Alistair and also your risk factors such as your family background such as a family history of prostate cancer as well the, the, the challenge with going to the toilet a bit more often, you know, most men, as they get older, it's part of the natural process. Absolutely. So at what point does does it become a little abnormal, the amount of time? I mean, for goodness, you know, people yeah. go, you know, maybe different seasons, you know, it's yeah. summer, winter, you know, this changes. But when is it at a point that you think, actually, this should be ringing some bells? Um, well, we would say if you feel something is not right, yeah. if you have hit the 50 plus mark, slightly younger if you're from a black African mm. or black Caribbean uh, background, but if you've hit that 50 uh, plus mark, you're getting up, it just doesn't feel right, you're generally not feeling right, go and have a conversation with your GP. It doesn't matter if your GP says, look, I think you're fine, but, you know, let's have a proper conversation about it. The thing is to go as soon as possible. So there's no, um, there's no right and wrong to the timing. It's just if something doesn't feel right, if you're getting up and you're noticing that that timing is different, if you're anxious or worried, um, it may be that, you know, everything feels fine, seems normal, but if you're anxious or worried, go and talk to that GP or to your pharmacist mm -hmm. in the first place. I mean, we were talking, Wayne and I, earlier on, about the pharmacist and the role of the pharmacist, there are some very, very good people out there you can talk to, including your GP, the pharmacist, uh, a local health practitioner. And that's the whole message, isn't it? Get talking. And Wayne, Absolutely. I know that's Absolutely. why you're involved. And obviously mm. you come from a part of London that has a, a high proportion of black African, black Caribbean uh, members of the community. Yeah. So your role here is to really reach out to them. Uh, absolutely, and that's one of the key reasons why we wanted to um, uh, work with all kids really, was um, to target those individuals um, and that population as a whole, and really get that message out there that um, uh, we need to, um, uh, uh, if you have a concern, um, then raise that with your uh, health professional, with your GP, mm. um, and um, let's just clarify it and clear it, mm. rather than um, you you know, being worried at home. And people see this early as well. So, um, like you said, like um, it's been mentioned really, you know, uh, family 
um, members were noticed getting up uh, mm -hmm. often, wives were noticed their husbands getting up a little bit more often um, during the night, etc. Let's 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 just clarify and, and double and there's check. And th there's often some cultural reasons why people don't present early, because I, I think you were saying before we came on air that yeah. actually within that community, you know, sometimes the the, the frequency that people will actually present for not just this but for many illnesses mm. it's just it doesn't happen as much yeah absolutely so um in new one we we recognize that um uh, our patients present very late in in some in some instances and we and this is what we're trying to improve really and we we recognize that actually if we um if we um, try and give them that information and support them in it but then we, we can um, make those changes um, and i i also think you know our um our our population um, recognise their, their issues um, early um, and if they can that really gives them a better chance at, at survival um, and our GPs and our um, health professionals are there to try and help and support that. And being aware of course that A you come from a more vulnerable group and B yeah. the fact that you might have a history and or any symptoms showing mm -hmm. and actually coming back to you Rebecca again with this with the presenting early how much of a difference mm. can that make if you really do pluck up the courage you think mm. something's not quite right you speak maybe to the pharmacy mm. pharmacist first mm. or your gp and you present how much of a difference are we talking about it's so so important um we want to avoid uh, people presenting at a and e because not only are you presenting very often late with advanced stage cancer, but the anxiety of being in A&E, the worry, you just don't have that time to have a proper conversation with um, the health practitioners mm. there that you would do if you were going to your GP and then you were being referred on to your local hospital. But it's huge. I mean, if you're picking up prostate cancer or indeed any cancer early, um, your chances of survival, the sort of treatment you have is so much more positive, Alistair. Um, and the experience you're going to have is going to be more positive. So you can present early um, and they can um, they can watch it. There's a, a, a particular type of treatment called uh, watchful waiting or mm -hmm. active surveillance where they'll watch you and they'll monitor you. And then if you need to go on to something like chemotherapy or hormone, hormone replacement therapy um, or surgery, then they'll do that. But the earlier you start, very often the less invasive the treatment and the much better the outcome. Now on the positive side, you know, you've been CEO of uh, ORCID for some time mm. now. You will have seen a lot of change over those years. It, it doesn't seem to be quite the taboo that it was. Absolutely. So when I first joined ORCID, um, I found that younger men were talking about cancer more openly, um, but actually older men were very reluctant. I mean, it is a, it, it's a sensitive part of the body. Obviously for men, there's a lot of embarrassment uh, uh, around having cancer or around having prostate cancer mm. and talking about it. And one of the things that we work so hard to do is to get men to be much more open about it, to feel less embarrassed, to have the courage to go to the GP. I think um, any woman watching this program will say, you know, we as women get very used to going to the GP. We take our elderly parents there, yeah. we take children there. It's not such a great ordeal for us. Whereas for men to actually have the courage to go to the GP is a, is a much bigger thing. So, but we're trying to support men and encouraging men. And whether we do that through family members, whether it's through our leaflets, talking to our nurse, that is so important, really, um, that they're not embarrassed because that embarrassment could, could cost your life. Mm. Well, exactly. It makes yeah. a massive difference. And actually, if you just want to pick up one of the leaflets mm. there a second, okay. these are the leaflets that um, are available. So this is our male cancer leaflet. It covers all the three male cancers. Um, it's a very, very good guide to male cancer. So what it is, what your risk mm. factors are, gives you a bit of an overview of the um, the sorts of treatments that, that uh, you you might be offered, um, and really we hope gives you some confidence to yeah. actually talk to the GP. The other materials that we have here, this is a, a, a project that we've been funded by the big lottery to do, which is really working across seven London boroughs, working with men from Black African and Black Caribbean communities. And this is one of our leaflets on prostate cancer, um, which we were talking to, to Wayne about. And it really gives a very good introduction to prostate cancer. It talks about your risk as a man from that particular community and what you need to be looking and for. And of course, we have people, thank you very much for that. Yeah, mm. thank you. Um, we've got people watching, obviously, from the whole of the UK and further afield. Yes. And these kind of programmes, the amount of information that is available to men now about 
prostate cancer, along mm. with other, other cancers. It, it, it's quite broad and we seem to know an awful lot more mm. than we ever did before. Mm. And as you were saying there before, that the treatment is a lot, lot better. How much has that advanced over the last, say, 15, 20 years? Well, I, I think it's a very, very good point. I think it's a very exciting area to be in. There's been a lot of investment across the board um, into prostate cancer. So finding, for example, new ways to treat it and to manage it, um, looking at new tests to help diagnosis that are less invasive. Um, and every day, researchers across the globe are investing in and looking to understand this, whether it's um, you know identifying potential new treatment and, and testing that and getting it out to men who need it as quickly as possible, or sort of you know more the looking under the microscope and understanding what's happening with the cells. Um, what we really want to see as an organisation, one of the things that we want to see is much more investment in research. Mm. So really trying to find new ways to diagnose it as diagnose it as quickly as possible, so that it's you know it doesn't feel um, such a frightening experience you go in you have a blood test and it's picked up very quickly and that's a really good point because Wayne you obviously are talking to the community a lot in in your area what's the response been from the various campaigns that you've been working with Orchid on and the general sort of idea that you know prostate cancer isn't the sentence that it might have been at one time mm. it's very treatable and so on yeah. is that message getting through i think so i think in in general for cancer really i think actually the message is getting through that actually is treatable and potentially um uh, something that you can live well and beyond with actually mm. and we do a lot of work with um uh, other charities like macmillan to provide that um support at the end of a pathway at the end of um, treatment, sorry. Um, so I think the message is absolutely getting through and I think um, uh, it's important for um, uh, opportunities like this mm -hmm. really to really, again, promote the importance of, of um, just checking and finding out and speaking to your GP or clinician to really mm -hmm. um, be clear about whether there is an issue there and, and we can resolve it quite quickly actually mm -hmm. through a, a blood test or, or, or um, further tests at the hospital. It's not necessarily that once you are referred, that means you have cancer. That's what us double checking Mm. And reviewing the results and, and having a And that's look. the thing, isn't it? Mm. It's just getting checked, as you yeah. said, Rebecca, mm. earlier on, just making sure if anything's slightly different or if a partner or somebody notices something slightly Absolutely. different. So, again, Wayne, just to sum up, for the people within your borough, yeah. what's the real core message you want to get across to them when it comes to prostate cancer? I think it's, it's um, uh, speaking to your GP or speaking to your health professional mm. as soon as you um, notice any of the signs we've described um, earlier, Portia's um, uh, raised. I think it's about saying, let's try and tackle it early because it's treatable. Mm. Um, and um, let's 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 improve that for our local population. Mm. And it will, and it, as you say, it's going to make a massive difference if you just present that little bit earlier. And there's so much information of, available. Yeah. So there's information on um, the NHS website um, uh, around some of this information. Uh, all kids have their website, and I think that's um, a really positive one mm. that um, really focuses on the male cancers. Um, uh, and there's a number of charities out there that have uh, information that's available and all readily available. You know. You go into Google and you, you type it in, you'll have some information there. And I would um, urge you to kind of uh, look at um, uh, charities like Orchid um, who really provide that um, particular information. Mm. And you must be aware of positive stories that come out of this where people have taken up that inform that invitation to seek advice and seek help and it's made a, a massive difference yeah, to their lives. Yeah, absolutely. I was at an event with um, uh, our main hospital at Newham site and we had a number of patients who um, raised that, you know, some weren't sure and they went and spoke to their GP and, and actually treatable and they're fine now and they're, they're living their life long term and I think that's the positive story that we need mm. to, to remind people of is that actually it's treatable and um, because they went to the GP early they, it was their, uh, for one instance, it was their wife that actually kind of said, look, um, um, you need to just go and sort this out, you know, and you've been, you've been going on about it for too long, far too long. And I, I know a, a friend that, um, uh, who raised it early and he was a young chap, actually, he was, uh, I think he was 48 at the time um, when he first contracted it and he's beaten it and he's loving life now mm. and he's traveling across the world um, and he's really just recognizing that actually um, he identified it early and, and um, was able to, to beat cancer. And let's talk very, very briefly about the tests that you can have. So if somebody's feeling, actually, I'm absolutely fine, you know, as a, as a man over 50, I'm very familiar with the call-up that you get mm -hmm. from your GP. And again, I suppose you're finding some people don't bother to go despite being invited. 
Yeah, so we'll, we'll mm. can talk about this as, but I think it's really just that, that initial conversation. So you, you, when when you enter the GP's practice and then you talk about your your issues and concerns, then the GP can start to um, take a bit of your history and understand about um, any um, uh, factors that might impact it. So family history might impact mm. it, like you mentioned, age, um, and you've talked about um, for Black um, African Caribbean males, it's going to be even of a higher risk. And that's just one of those um, things. It's just a statistic mm. of life. Absolutely, yeah. um, and that's recognising. And then taking other um, factors into account, um, i.e. your symptoms and what you describe. So um, once the GP's got all of that information, they can really make an assessment as to whether they, they are concerned or, or not sure about something how, as well and share that. How do you, you know, because at the end of the day, there's male bravado often involved yeah. here, isn't there? Which is a, a, a tough one to get over. So let's say, for example, there is a partner, wife of someone who she's a bit concerned about. Him. What, what advice would you give her to overcome that bit of bravado to push him down to the <laughs> doctor's office? Um, uh, so that's an interesting one because um, my father um, uh, had um, a scare, a prostate cancer scare. Um, he was fine and went to the GP. Um, uh, and it took him a while and uh, the advice I would say is look you know um, I don't want to lose my father as anybody else does and I when he mentioned he was um, a bit concerned I, I, I pushed him in that direction I don't know what advice I'd, mm. I'd give a, um, a wife or a partner but I would certainly urge them to if they see something is to raise it because um, actually it's treatable mm. um, and, um, and we need to recognize that there are um, ways that we can improve our um, you can continue life after after cancer. Mm. I think what we find, Alistair, is a lot of the women who we work with, um, who we interact with, with say our roadshows or community programs, they are very interested in this subject. They know that mm. their husband or brother might be at risk. So they're very good at knowing actually, this is what they're at risk of. Let me look out for it, and I'm just going to keep pushing and pushing until he does yeah. go to the GP. Brilliant. And we'll actually, take them to the GP. And I like yeah. to, I liked yeah. your idea of the kids as well. Yeah. You know, when, when it's your Absolutely. when it's your child telling you yeah. that's no longer the nagging wife or yeah. partner. Yeah. This is yeah. somebody who actually loves you and is yeah. doing it for that reason. Um, really, really great advice. Thank you so mm. much indeed. Now, Rebecca, you're going to be joining us again yes, for the second half. Um, but Wayne from NHS New Home CCG, thank you so much indeed thank for you. being with us, and uh, we wish you all the best up there in New Home and. Uh, in spreading that word and making sure that everyone understands that they just need to go okay. and to have a conversation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much indeed. Now, we must stress that should you suffer from any medical problems or health concerns, it's always highly recommended that you contact your doctor or GP, as the health show gives you an alternative viewpoint to the health concern being discussed. Lots more to talk about. Join us after the break. Welcome back to The Health Show, where we've been looking at prostate cancer. In this half of the show, I'd like to welcome Councillor Mark A. Santos from the London Borough of Redbridge. He's a Cabinet Member for Health, Social Care, Mental Health and Ageing, and is the Chair of the Redbridge Health and Wellbeing Board. He's been a councillor for the past five years and is an active supporter for the improvement of health and wellbeing in his local community. So, Mark, Great to see you. Um, and again, you. thank you very much indeed for joining us. Perhaps you could start off by telling us a little bit about how Redbridge Council became involved with ORCID. Um, well, I, I, perhaps I could say more, more generally, the role, the role of the council is around one of the key roles that we see our, um, us playing is about promoting the health and well-being of our residents, keeping our residents um, healthy and well and enabling people to live full, healthy lives. And one aspect of that is around addressing issues around... Um, cancer, whether that's about helping people to live um, healthy lifestyles. Um, and we do that as a council um, throughout people's whole lives, from when they're babies, with like our health visiting services, so like our children's centres. Um, in schools, we have healthy school standards and um, working with school dinner services, schools lunch services about um, healthy nutrition. Through investing in our parks, in Redbridge we have eight green flag parks out, and we have outdoor gym spaces. We invest in services like um, Fit for Fun, encouraging people to be physically active, exercise on referral, smoking cessation, um, drug and alcohol service, a whole range of services. So um, working with people and working with charities like Orchid are really important to us, to, as I said, to promote the health and well-being of our residents. And what trends are you noticing in the way that people react to male cancer? Are, are people a little bit more receptive? 
Um, I, I think so, but I think there's also so, still some issues and um, probably some uh, concerns about people coming forward. And we've heard in the first part of the show around issues around people being late diagnosis. And so that's, a, that's something we want to overcome. That's a challenge we need to, to try and meet and to encourage, as Rebecca and Wayne were saying, when people notice they have some symptoms. Um, it may not be prostate cancer. It may be some other issue, but actually always go and uh, get it checked out. And don't be embarrassed about it. Don't be embarrassed about, I mean, because clearly there is some, sometimes an issue about um, embarrassment, particularly with things like prostate cancer or um, uh, other male cancers because of, because of what, what because, because they're related, where they're, where they're related to, but people shouldn't be embarrassed. The doctor you're going to see ain't, isn't going to be embarrassed. You, should, you shouldn't be embarrassed to go and have those conversations. And it isn't a sign, men are often really, um, I think our, our, our experience um, is that men are often a bit rubbish about, about health um, generally and just encouraging and just thinking actually to, to take care of yourself because taking care of yourself is taking care of your family, is taking care of your loved ones. Um, and so, um, and that's really important to, to, to take care of your, around your health, go and visit your GP. Now, Rebecca, as a charity, ORCID, mm -hmm. you, you stretch further than the area we've been talking at today. So what is it, what do you notice in terms of diversification, like diverse areas like, like Mark's and we heard from Wayne earlier on, what are the different sort of pockets around the country that you're noticing? Are there any patterns there at all? I think that's really interesting. So across the UK what you'll find is that you may find certain areas where um, men for example uh, don't present early enough to their GP so you find that um, many of the cases that are coming through a quite advanced stage or going through A&E which I've spoken to before you'll find in other areas of the country um, that actually sort of health generally is much better you'll find certain areas of the country which might have a, a sort of uh, an area of extreme poverty, uh, again, where people are maybe not um, exercising, eating a balanced diet, um, and again, they're not presenting to their GP, uh, the smoking issues, etc. So you do find pockets across the UK where people are, um, you know, looking out at their health and, and being much more proactive um, and other areas where sadly it's not. And that's where we do a lot of work, actually. That's where we want to get into those communities where um, perhaps people are, are reluctant to go to the GP or there's more poverty there. We're out there, we're giving out our materials, giving out our information, talking to people in a very relaxed environment through road shows or going into, say, a community space or a place of worship and doing that in a very relaxed way, Alistair. And I think charities like Orchid have where... Uh, statutory bodies like councils have don't ha have the reach charities like awkward do mm. have the reach and the connect with communities and they know uh, often know how to mm. talk well better to communities mm. and, um, 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 and and be able to get the message the key messages across mm. Mm. and, that, and go, that's yeah. particularly important when we look at you know especially London and other parts of the UK where you have a very diverse range of ethnicities within mm. a community that sometimes you've actually got to get right into those communities mm. to have mm. much impact and you know you'll probably notice that mark with within you, your area no, absolutely and one of the one of the projects that we invest in is a service, is a health buddy service and actually reaching out um, to, to particular we work with our local Redbridge Council for voluntary service who have a team of, of health buddies from different from communities from different backgrounds so that we can connect better with communities in on their terms understanding and being able to better na navigate and overcome cultural barriers and be more culturally appropriate and be more linguistically appropriate in terms of reaching connecting with with people and we find that way we get better uh, outcomes for, for people and that, as I said I think that's why it's important to, for, for, for us to work with bodies like mm. ORCID who have that reach, who have that ability um, to, to connect with communities. And it's interesting listening to you talking about the way that you get into those communities and the, and the message has been really clear from Rebecca and Wayne so far that it's all about presenting if you feel something different about your body, especially if it's in that part of the body mm. that could be then related to a form of male cancer, that it's all about presenting. But what about prevention? Because you were saying, Mark, earlier on that you're very involved in, in sort of general health 
care yes. and making sure that people are hopefully stopping smoking and assisting where possible. What connection is there between male cancer and just general health? We, we heard about the fact that maybe your ethnicity might make a difference, yes. the fact whether it's in the family might make a difference. Are there any other things that could make a difference? Um, I don't, don't know the exact science around it, but what I do know is that often a healthy lifestyle will, will, will help prevent you from con contracting or, 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 or leading to a number of different conditions. And that's why um, the council invests in um, services that support people to stay healthy mm -hmm. and well. And from things like, as I said, the outdoor gyms that we have mm -hmm. in different parts of the borough, the fact that we have invested so that our parks are spaces that people can go in and use and, 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 and enjoy, um, the fact that we have programs like Fit for Fun, which reach out to particular uh, communities that are not um, engaging in physical activities um, and, um, and um, to be able to encourage them and enable people to do that. Um, um, having programs like exercise on referral where the GP can say to someone um, and for, a, for a low cost you can go have access to one of our gyms for a period of time with some support to from promote people. And those are always great places yeah. to again a, I, I presume you're probably going in with your material to talk to people there but also yeah. they talk to maybe men of a very similar age, culture, background and maybe feel more free to have a yes. kind of conversation mm. that they should have. And I know you're you're actively in, involved in all of that, aren't you, Rebecca? Absolutely. So we've had um, uh, some support from the big lottery uh, and also from uh, the CCG. We were talking to, to Wayne earlier on. Um, and one of the things that that support has allowed us to do is to have materials that are very easy to pick up, take away. So, for example... This is mm. our uh, Z card, which you slip into a back pocket takeaway. It gives you a really good overview of prostate cancer. And we're going to be taking that up to Redbridge and other boroughs um, through uh, community road shows. So we'll have um, shopping centres, we'll have our information stand, give out materials. Um, we've also been going into barber shops as well. So um, some of the Black African and Black Caribbean barber shops where men are seated, they can't run away from us. <laughs> um, so giving them our materials and having a chat with them and also training them those barbers to have that conversation. Absolutely. We've been doing the same with um, minicab uh, offices as well. So training people to have that conversation with their clients is really important. And we've got coming up um, in September, I believe, you have um, Cancer Awareness Week. That's right. So um, every year we have an annual Orchid Male Cancer Awareness Week. And it's an opportunity for us to work with all of our sort of partners and friends and with men and their families to talk about male cancer. Um, 50,000 men every year will be diagnosed with a male cancer in the UK and 47,000 of those uh, are with prostate cancer. And it's a week where we'll be talking to um, the media, to all of our sort of various stakeholders about signs and symptoms of male cancer, what to do about it, encouraging, as Mark was saying earlier on, to go out there and have a conversation with your loved ones, with the GP, um, to talk about in maybe your workplace or your place of worship or barbershop, as we were saying, to really get men and their families talking about male cancer and the signs and symptoms, what to look for, and to get that really all-important visit to the GP booked in. Do you think, Mark, there are still people out there? You know, we, we sometimes take it for granted. You know, we're, we're very close to it all. But, you know, how much ignorance of prostate cancer do you think there really is out there still? I would imagine there's a. I would imagine there's a lot, and I would imagine it's, there's a combination of factors as we've we've talked about. It might be also that people have no sense that they've got a closeness to risk, um, um, and that um, um, Rebecca described earlier on that there is a, a, a you know higher risk amongst Black African and Black Caribbean men. There's a higher risk amongst um, men whose fathers or brothers um, have had prostate cancer. I think people might not know that information mm. and be aware of it. Then there's the issue about. Um, accessing health services, so to encourage men to be better at accessing health service, and then there might be the issue about uh, a, a, an embarrassment factor, and mm -hmm. just, just to keep re bringing home that message, don't be embarrassed, the doctor ain't going to be embarrassed mm. um, a, about it, they've seen it all before, hundreds of times that they don't, and they'll, they'll forget you as soon as you're walking out the door, or forget it all as soon as you walk out the door but you, but you need to um, um, and not be embarrassed to go and have that be checked out. And again, we talked in the first half, uh, Wayne was talking about, you know, his father and he was talking about, you know, stories of people who have presented early enough. And I, and I really think it's a, a great way to really show the value of presenting early enough with maybe mm. some more stories. Maybe if you've got um, well, any I don't examples. Have, I don't have some stories myself, but I, I looked on the Orchid's um, 
website today and you've got lots of different mm. stories and, 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 and actually some really great yeah. stories and, um, um, and, and I would really encourage people to go and have a look there and there's some videos on YouTube mm. um, as well and some written case studies of, of people telling mm. um, their story and, 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 and people um, who live to tell the tale mm. around it and, and live through it and I think that'd be really mm. And that's the real key us. isn't yes. it is the fact that you know the longer you leave it the less chance you have of living to be able to tell the tale. Mm. Mm, absolutely. And I think it's so important to, to be open, to have those open discussions with people as well. Um, and as Mark was saying, you know, have a look at our site. There's some really good um, people's experiences that they've mm. shared, really positive experiences where they've gone to the GP early, they're living with a cancer or they've been treated uh, for the cancer. We, for example, have a, an exhibition going on uh, at Brent at the moment, which is fantastic. And it shows all the different faces of prostate cancer. So people who might have a family member with the disease or who are living with the disease. And, and I think it really conveys so well um, some of the more positive side of, you know, I have prostate cancer, I'm living with it, or I have a family member and, you know, we're supporting him through it. So, yes, I, I think that positive message is so important. And for you, you encounter people all the time yeah. who are either living with somebody or living themselves mm. with prostate cancer. What are some of the misconceptions that people might have about it that might be preventing? We've talked a lot about people not presenting, but mm. what are the sort of thoughts that maybe this is an opportunity for us to say, hey, hang on a second, these are the facts? Um, I think the big thing for us, Alistair, um, and this has been touched on by both Mark and Wayne, is that being diagnosed with cancer, being diagnosed with prostate cancer, is not what you imagine in terms of over the years people have thought about it as a sort of death sentence, you know, gosh, that's it, my life is over. It is not about that. If you're diagnosed early, if you have good conversations and a good relationship with all of the people around you who are looking after you, so your consultants, your surgeon, your GPs, etc., it's a much more positive outlook uh, than it was, say, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. And we want to really emphasise that. So, so the key thing is that, you know, there are so many treatments and so many options out there. If you are diagnosed with prostate cancer, that, that's key. Don't ignore it. Um, get to your GP early. That's absolutely crucial. It's not going to disappear. Um, and as Mark mm. rightly said, it may not be prostate cancer. It may be you referred earlier on to, you know, getting older and just getting up in the night, all those sorts of things. Um, so it may not be prostate cancer. It may be something else. But until you have that conversation, you're absolutely. not going to be reassured. And more importantly, your family won't be reassured either. So you need to have that conversation. So I think for me, those are the two really big things. And there are some fantastic organisations out there to support you. Um, we have a fantastic nurse-led free phone helpline which um, people can contact and speak to a nurse but there's support groups out there that we're involved in and that other organizations are involved in so there's a lot of support out there and people. the great thing is is if for example they use your helpline is mm. that your experts will know the questions to ask Absolutely. So we're not there to give advice, but we're there to listen and to support you. So if you want to talk about the treatments you're having and you want to understand it in a bit more detail, our nurses can do that. Um, we have people who just call up and just want to chat. We have family members who just want to chat and they found the experience overwhelming. And that's just what our nurses can do. If you need five minutes on the phone, if you need an hour and a half, if you want to come back to us once a week, you can do that. It's whatever support and information you need. And tell us, Mark, a little bit more about the engagement that you're doing um, in, in Redbridge area. You talked about, you know, engaging with uh, places of worship. You talked about going to community groups and things. You know, give us an idea of, A, how difficult it is sometimes to get yes. into those places and then the kind of message that you're taking there. Um, in, in the, the council will work through, often will work through um, voluntary organisations to be able to reach out to different community groups to ensure that we um, can overcome some of the cultural and linguistic barriers that there, there are. So I talked a bit about our health buddy service that, as I said, was run, run, we run through Redbridge Council for, for voluntary service. But we also invest in um, other, other services from Age UK, Care, uh, the Redbridge Carer Support Service, um, 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 one place sees a disability um, a mental health organisation who have particular understandings of, 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 of issues and actually particular connects with communities to be able to reach out to those those communities and similarly that's why we're very supportive of of the North East London and CCGs um, and um, support that, um, 
um, commissioning and working with uh, ORCID to, uh, in relation to this work. And obviously for any family going through this, you know, you mm -hmm. talked about the support that you can give people because again, you know, men aren't always known to be the most communicative when things aren't going well. So again, there's that support for those around them, mm. which is really, really important, mm. isn't it? Absolutely. I think the impact of a cancer diagnosis on a family member should never be underestimated. I think it can be overwhelming. Um, I've spoken to family members who felt, you know, it, it feels like a sort of great wave of anxiety and worry. And that can stretch from, you know, he's been diagnosed with cancer, what does that mean? Right through to some of the, you know, how are we going to pay our mortgage? How are we going to pay the bills if he's the main um, sort of earner? So I think there's a whole raft of things that um, you need to, to be aware of. You need to recognise if you're a family member that you are going to feel that. And you shouldn't feel guilty about it. You need to speak to somebody, get some support and, and you know, you need to be there for the person who's been diagnosed, but you also need to be there for yourself as a carer or a family member. Um, so I would say, you know, don't be too hard on yourself um, because you do have a yes. whole load of practical um, anxieties as well as looking after that person who's been diagnosed. And you, you were saying, Mark, earlier on that, you know, for, for, for many men, it's that whole, you know, proposition of going into the GP surgery, you know, that's the feeling of vulnerability mm -hmm. and so on. But actually, aren't the treatments and the checkout processes a lot less invasive than they used to be? Mm. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think Rebecca might be better to, to yeah. answer mm. about the, the different types of... I, I think um, it's really interesting. It, it Absolutely. Um, I think it depends a little bit in terms of once you're diagnosed with prostate cancer and the consultants know how advanced it is, what stage it is, etc., then an appropriate treatment uh, can be given to you. And there's a, a really good sort of mixture of uh, treatments out there from um, you know watching the disease, watching how it progresses, um, right through to surgery or chemotherapy. So there's a lot out there for men. And there's new treatments coming out all the time and in development. So that's a a very positive message um, to share with uh, viewers and I think in terms of that initial conversation um, that you might have with the GP it's about saying to the GP and the GP saying to you, you know right what are we going to what are we going to do tell me about your symptoms and don't be too um, embarrassed or frightened uh, about talking about what it is that you're worried about or what you come to see uh, uh, to see the GP about um, and then deciding what's the initial test that you that you might have which would include things like the PSA test um, which we've got some very good information on our website. About and again, that. as you said, Mark, you know, the chances are the, the, these doctors have seen it all before. Yeah, they've come, they, they, this is nothing new absolutely. to them, and they're used to it. And one of the things that always impresses me with the medical profession is how they deal with people, mm. because they recognise yeah. people's concerns, they recognise how they feel. We're, we're coming up towards the end of the show, and we've, we've covered a huge amount um, over the uh, show, and really valuable information, and the great thing is that people now know how much more support is out there for them than maybe they ever knew before. Maybe just a, a, a quick closing thoughts, getting back to basics again maybe, in terms of what core message you would really like people to go away with, Rebecca. Um, I think for me it's, it's sort of summarising a bit of what Mark was saying. Don't be embarrassed. The GP has seen it before. Um, that GP is there to support you and to have a really good conversation, so don't be embarrassed. Um, and I would say the sooner you get to the GP and start things going, the better your outcome. Absolutely. I would say for family members, you know, if there is something that doesn't seem right, if there's something out of the ordinary, if that um, person is reluctant to go to the GP, then support him to do that. If they're living with prostate cancer, Support them, but also support yourself. That's really important. There's lots of information out there. So that would be my sort of yeah. summary. And I would echo exactly Yeah, I was going to say, I think Sorry, Rebecca said it all. Well, said. you know, it's, it's been absolutely great to have an opportunity to really raise the profile of mm. something that isn't talked about enough. And I think to have that opportunity has been really great. So, mm. Rebecca from Orchid, you know, we wish you all the best. And Thank uh, you so much. especially in the Awareness Week Thank coming you. up Thank in you. September. And uh, Mark, keep spreading that good word all around Redbridge. And let's much. hope that people are listening and, most importantly, that they are ready to listen to your messages.
Thank you so much. It's been really great having you on the show. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. I'd like to thank all of our guests who've attended today's show and uh, sharing so much valuable and important information. Once again, we must stress that should you suffer from any medical problems or health concerns, it's always highly recommended that you contact your doctor or GP as the health show gives you an alternative viewpoint to the health concern being discussed. Again, as always, if you'd like to find out more about this or any of the subjects that we discussed on the show, please do email us at healthshow at islamchannel.tv. Again, that's healthshow at islamchannel.tv. And we'd be more than happy to put you in touch with Orchid. But for now, it's goodbye from me. See you again next week. Assalamu alaikum.